Hey everybody, my name is Sam Kwok, one of the Kwok brothers. I'm a real estate investor, certified credit counselor, as well as a serial entrepreneur. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to pay off a 30 year mortgage in just five to seven years. That's right, five to seven years. Now, just take a look at this. This is Christy, and she was able to pay off close to $40,000 in just a short few months. She used a strategy that I'm gonna show you in this video, and this is without refinancing, without loan modification, without sending an extra principal payment to the mortgage, or hurting your credit. So if you stick around to the very end of this video, I'm gonna show you exactly what Christy did to pay down her mortgage, and I also have a gift for you guys. So definitely stick around towards the end. Now, of course, I do need to give you a disclaimer saying that I am not an attorney, I am not an accountant, nor am I a financial advisor, so please consult with your professionals before implementing any or all of the strategy that I'm gonna to explain to you guys in this video. Now, the first thing we need to talk about is why is your mortgage dangerous? Your mortgage can actually cost you thousands of thousands of dollars if left alone, if you don't use this strategy. So I got my piece of paper here. I'm gonna use this as an illustration. Hope you guys can follow with me here. So I'm gonna draw a chart for you guys as to why your mortgage is so deadly. And if you leave it alone, if you don't do anything, it's gonna cost you thousands of thousands of dollars and you can easily, easily potentially save a lot of money if you use this strategy. So let's go and draw this chart. And this right here is called your amortization chart. And amortization, all mortgages run off an amortization. This is typically how a mortgage is paid down over a long period of time. So this horizontal represents the amount of time you typically spend on paying down your mortgage. So uh, as you can imagine, the left side is zero. So if you just got your mortgage, this is where you're at. As you're paying down, of course, on the far right side is a 30-year mark. If you have a 15-year mortgage, then this will be a 15-year number, but we're talking about a 30-year amortization, 30-year mortgage. Now, the vertical line, the line that goes up and down, represents the amount of money you pay for your monthly payments. So this is monthly, and abbreviate it, payment, and this is typically expressed using a dollar sign. Now, let's say your monthly payment for your mortgage is $1,000 a month. Nice and even, we're gonna just call this $1,000 a month. Now, with that $1,000 a month, not all of it actually goes towards paying down the principal balance. Principal balance is what we wanna pay down. That's the actual mortgage amount that we wanna pay down. The more we pay down principal, the more equity we build, which is good. It builds more wealth, and we get to do more things with our equity. Now, the other part of the $1,000 is your interest that goes to the banks. Of course, the interest doesn't do anything other than the fact that it's a cost of borrowing that money with the bank. So the line I'm gonna draw for you guys, this next line here, okay, I'm gonna use blue, represents the amount of interest you pay over time. So you can see here, by, just by the line, vast majority of your $1,000 monthly payment for your mortgage is going towards interest. So about, of course, in this example, about 80, 90% of it is going towards uh, interest. Now this is extreme, a lot of times it won't be that bad, but it's pretty darn close. So this right here, this zone, professionals call this the front-loaded interest zone. The reason why we call it front-loaded is vast majority of the interest is paid up front when your mortgage is relatively new, it's relatively young. So we call this the front-loaded interest zone. Vast majority of your monthly payment uh, towards the beginning of your mortgage is going towards of course, the interest, it, you know, the banks get to pocket that money. Now, this red line that I'm gonna draw for you guys represents the amount of principal that you end up paying. So I'm gonna label these so that it's easy for you to follow with me here. So this is interest. So blue is interest, red is principal. Again, the more we pay down principal, the better for us. It actually gives us more equity, less debt overall. Now, if you notice something here, that very small amount of principal is actually paid towards the beginning of your mortgage. So if you just got your mortgage today or you refinanced recently, very small amount of your $1,000 a monthly payment is actually paying down the principal. So this red zone here is all principal. And you can see here that towards the back end, towards the later part of the mortgage is actually helping us, right? We have to wait until 15, 20 year mark for us to actually start paying down or vast majority of our monthly payment is actually going towards principal, which pays down our balance. So we got to wait for a very long time to, for us to get any kind of result. You can see here that this system is heavily stacked against us because here's why. This is why it's going to cost you a lot of money if you don't use this strategy. Now about a seven to 10 year mark, which is about here, okay? Um, note, note that this is not a visual representation of what, what the seven to, year ten, seven to 10 year mark looks like, but 
around seven to 10 year mark, something interesting happens. And there's usually two things that usually, usually happens uh, today in the 21st century. Now, the first scenario that happens is we typically move because of a job relocation, or maybe our kids are out of the home, or some life event occurs where we end up moving to another part of the city or completely out of the state, it, which in that case, you typically are going to sell your house, list it, and, and probably end up buying a new house. Now, when you buy a new house and you get a new mortgage, do you get to continue the progress that you've made over the last seven to 10 years? No, what happens is if you get another 30 year mortgage, you start all the way from the beginning back to square one, whereas where vast majority of your monthly payment, again, is going towards interest. Now, if you made it to the seven to 10 year mark, you're starting to gradually pick up more principal payment as you pay it down. But unfortunately, you just got a new mortgage, so vast majority of your payment is now going back to front-loaded interest zone. Ouch, right? This is not, not a good thing when our goal is to start paying down our principal. This is not a good thing for our own interest. Nope, no pun intended there. So that's one typical event that happens that sets us back when it comes to paying down our mortgage. The second scenario that typically happens, and this is more frequent, and that is refinancing. You know, what typically happens is you get your mortgage broker or banker that may call you and say, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Borrower, congratulations. You've done a great job paying down your mortgage for the last seven or 10 years. Hey, tell you what, come on down back to our office. Let's go and get you refinanced. We'll turn this $1,000 monthly payment into $900 a month payment. And of course, most people are like, oh my gosh, that's $100 less we're paying right now. Therefore, we're saving money. We can take that $100 and do better things. And of course, that's what most people think. Now, the problem is, if you do choose to refinance because of a lower rate, or maybe you get uh, seduced by the, the lower monthly payment, what happens is you start all over back to square one, where vast majority of your monthly payment is going back to front-loaded interest zone. Congratulations, right? You don't get to progress, you don't get to continue if you refinance into another 30-year mortgage, which typically happens more than, more than anything. So what happens is you're in a continual, perpetual cycle of never, ever getting to the zone where vast majority of your monthly payment is going towards principal. That is the problem. There lies a problem where either we sell and we start a new mortgage or we refinance into another 30-year amortization where vast majority, again, monthly payment is going towards interest. So we're constantly stuck. We're constantly stuck in this front-loaded interest zone because we're either refinancing or getting another mortgage. Not a good thing. The odds are stacked against us and it's time for us to change what we're doing because if we try to do the same thing over and over and over again, expecting a different result, that is the definition of insanity and we, I, I'm pretty sure you're not insane. So let's try something new that could get us to the principal payment zone the back end zone very quickly. Our goal is to get to this zone in less than seven to 10 years. In fact, I wanna help you get there in less than a year using this very strategy. So I wanna introduce a new tool. We need a new instrument that could help us get to that zone quicker than our 30 year mortgage. And I wanna introduce you to a, something called home equity line of credit. This is also abbreviated as a HELOC. Now, you may have heard this HELOC before, and there's a lot of myth that we need to bust because there's a lot of false rumors and false information that surrounds the concept of home equity line of credit. Now, let's go and make a distinction between a HELOC versus a mortgage. What are the main differences? Because there's quite a bit of difference as far as the main differences between a HELOC and a mortgage. First of all, a HELOC is open-ended. Okay, so it sounds good, open-ended, right? It sounds like we're opening up our arms, right? <laughs> sounds good. But with the mortgage, it's closed-ended, meaning once you make your mortgage payment to the bank, you can't get the principal portion back, right? You can't borrow back. With the home equity line of credit, once you make a principal payment on the HELOC, you can also reuse that money whenever you want. So this is reuse and pay back. Very, very good. But you can, on this side, on the mortgage side, I'm just gonna stick with green here. Uh, you can't reuse it. There's no reusing. All you, have, all you can do is just pay it back and that's all the option you have. The second thing is, of course, with the mortgage, the interest is amortized. And with the HELOC, on the contrary, is open-ended simple interest, okay? Often known as average daily interest. I'm gonna abbreviate it, average daily interest. And third thing, mortgages, of course, can be variable and fixed. So V and F, variable and fixed. Now, here's the myth that I want to bust, is that not all HELOCs are variable. They can also be 
fixed as well as far as the interest rate goes. So there's a lot of people that say, oh, Sam, the HELOC is variable. It's, it's, it, you know, it's high. You know, it's not a good thing. Why are we using a high interest rate HELOC to pay down a lower interest rate mortgage? Well, I want to tell you and you know, bust a myth here that, number one, not all HELOC interest rates are high. In fact, a lot of times if you get a first lien position HELOC, a HELOC interest rates can be anywhere between 3 to 5%. I actually seen a client of mine who, who was able to get a HELOC at 2.5% fixed, which is very, very good. So yes, you can fix the interest rate on the HELOC, and HELOC interest rates are also very competitive and comparable to your you know, conventional 30-year fixed as well. So I got to get that myth out of the way because a lot of people sometimes like to ask me that question, hey, isn't HELOC interest rates higher? Not all the time. Even though the HELOC interest rate may be higher, I want to show you why it comes out ahead when, compared, when using it to pay down your mortgage. So just know that big difference. I'm going to put a star on the open-ended as well as the simple, because those are two big, 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 big things that you have to know. Open-ended meaning, again, you can pay it back, reuse, simple interest, average daily interest. I'm going to get to that in just one sec as to how that's different than your amortized interest. So let's go and talk about this average daily interest, so average daily interest. And I promise you guys, I won't bore you with math. I know math can be boring. Trust me, I, I get it. I'll, I'll keep this fun and hot and sexy, okay? Uh, yes, I said the word. YouTube's probably gonna ban me now. But in all seriousness, guys, I'll keep this fun. Now, average daily interest is how the HELOC calculates interest and charges you interest. Very, very important as to how we understand this because sometimes if we miss it, you're not gonna get the strategy. So here's how the average daily interest concept works. Watch and pay attention very carefully. Now the way the average daily interest works is it takes the interest rate, okay, percentage, so that's the interest rate, divided by either 365 or 360 days. It depends on, oops, 360 days. It depends on what bank you go to. Sometimes the bank uses a 360 days, which is the commercial lending year, or 365, which is, of course, that's how many days are in a year. And so interest rate divided by 365 or 360 times the balance of today e equals interest percentage amount that we pay. So here's the logic behind this, and I'll break this down in a very easy to understand. The interest rate for the HELOC, okay, so let's say 5% or 4%, divided by 365 days, which will get a very, very low number, times the balance for that today. So if our balance today is $100,000, okay? And then let's say our interest is, I'll call it 5%, and we'll use 365, okay? So I got my calculator, 0 0.05 is essentially the same thing as 5%, divide by 365. So again, we got a very, very, very low number. We're gonna times this by $100,000, which is our balance for today, equals $13.69. So that's the amount of interest that we are charged this very day. So there's not, not enough room, so I'm gonna put it down here, uh, $13.69. So if our balance changes tomorrow, right? If today was $100,000, what if the balance goes from $100,000 down to $95,000? Wouldn't our interest amount change too, right? Because we have a decrease of $5,000 on our average daily balance Therefore, our interest also goes down as well. Very, very important to know this concept because it, obviously if we don't, then it's gonna be hard for you to understand the strategy. So why this is very important is that the HELOC interest can change every single day. If today is $100,000 and tomorrow is $95,000, our interest amount that we are charged today versus tomorrow is gonna be completely different. So that's what we need to know about average daily interest. So let's get to the fun part. Let's go and explain how this strategy actually works in a visual representation. Now, this is just one version out of many. There's in fact seven that I can count just on top of my head. There are seven different versions of the strategy. I'm gonna give you one that's actually relatively popular, uh, especially with the economy the, the way it is. And that's probably a question that you have. You know, how does this work with the recession? How does this work with the COVID-19 pandemic? I'll explain all those questions in just one sec. But the question that you probably have right now at this given moment is, Sam, are the banks still lending because of the pandemic, I mean, are they still doing it? Because there are banks that completely shut down their HELOC department. Now, my answer is a resounding yes. The banks are still lending on HELOCs. Not all banks are, but the banks that are still doing it, they're still qualifying people and they're doing it just fine. So yes, banks are still lending. It's not gone, it's not going away. HELOCs will be around to stay. 
So here's how the strategy works, and this revolves around using what's called a first lean HELOC. Now, of course, if there's a first lean HELOC, there's also a second lean HELOC, which is more of the traditional HELOC that most people get, but there is a concept of a first lean HELOC. Now, the way the first lien HELOC works is, let's say you have your mortgage here. So this is your mortgage. And let's say you have a balance of $200,000. So that is the actual amount that you owe to the banks for the mortgage, $200,000, right? Now what happens is when you go and get a first lien position HELOC, you'll typically get anywhere between 80 to 90% loan to value in establishing the limit. Now loan to value, for those who don't know, is what they do is they take the appraised value, the value of your home, and times it by 90%. So let's say your home value is $300,000. So I'm just gonna use the math of $300,000, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go $300,000 on my calculator times 90%, and that leaves us with a $270,000 number. So that $270,000 is your limit. Okay, so this is HELOC, $270,000 limit. So Imagine having like a credit card that is attached to your home equity with a limit of $270,000. So you can use up to $270,000 in terms of your home equity line of credit. So how this works is what we're gonna do is we're gonna completely pay off and replace our mortgage with the $270,000 limit HELOC. So what happens, I'm gonna use a different color to, to annotate this. $200,000 principal is gonna be quote unquote transferred into the home equity line of credit. Now the actual mechanism of this is we're gonna just write a check out of our HELOC to do a principal payment against our mortgage. So we're gonna do $200,000. So what we've done is essentially did a balance transfer, right? We took a $200,000 mortgage balance, moved it to our home equity line of credit balance, and now we have a $200,000 balance on our HELOC. We no longer have a mortgage. Mortgage is gone, and the only debt that is on our property is a HELOC. So the HELOC is your only debt on your property. It's the only thing that you're pretty much owing on the home. So there's no mortgage, just one single debt. Now you might be saying, well Sam, this just seems like, you know, robbing from Paul to pay Peter. Well, not quite, because remember how I explained that a HELOC interest is completely different, how the calculation works is different than a mortgage? So the way that we pay back the HELOC, completely different, very efficient and effective the way that I'm gonna show you. So here's how the rest of the strategy works. Now typically you got your income coming in and what you have used to do is you took your income and put it in your checking account. Now let me ask you this, how much are you getting paid to put your money in your checking account? Like <laughs> zero, right? If you're lucky, you know, you probably have one of those checking accounts that gives you maybe what, 0.25%, point, maybe 1%, I don't know, but this is normally 0% annual percentage yield. You don't get paid much. Even if you do pay and put it, put it in your savings account, you're probably still getting 0.5% annual percentage yield. Not a whole lot of money, and inflation is 2%. So literally, even if you put your money in your savings account, your money is eroding away on inflation at 2% every year. So not a good thing for you, right? The odds are stacked against you when it comes to savings. So instead of, parking and leaving your money in your checking account. Why don't we throw that money, all of your income, all of your income and savings into the home equity line of credit, whereby lowering the HELOC balance by all of your income, right? You're, you can expect to save anywhere between two to 5% interest because you're lowering the, the balance, the average daily balance. So let's say for example, the income is you know $6,000, okay? We're just using an example here, right? So $6,000 lowers the $270,000 balance down to $264,000. So if our interest rate is 5% on the HELOC, 5% on $270,000 is gonna be a higher interest amount than 5% on $264,000 at, at a given point of time. And we wanna keep this balance as low as possible and keep it low for a long period, period. Now what typically my clients do is they'll keep this low for anywhere between 21 to 30 days because each day that the balance is at $264,000, they're paying interest on $264,000. The very moment that this balance goes up to anything higher than 264, 
they're paying more interest over time. So what they do is, this is something that I don't typically give away for free, but I'll give it to you because, of course, what the heck, I love you guys, okay? Which, by the way, subscribe to our channel and hit the like button if you guys are liking this so far, and if you guys enjoy my, of course, presentation. So 21 or 30 days, we're gonna keep this balance as low as possible. So here's what my clients typically do. I'm gonna redraw this because there's a lot of mess going on here. So uh, we got our HELOC, and I'll make this quick and our mortgage here, and our mortgage is no more. So what happens is all the income goes in, the HELOC, and what they do is they use a credit card in the middle, and I know, I can hear, you know, you're disgust, eh, a credit card, right, you guys don't like it. And so, so do I, I don't like credit card debt, they're absolutely terrible. But here's what we do with the credit card. We do all of our expenses with the credit card. So we do groceries, uh, gas, maybe you got kids, right? Um, you got general other expenses, bills, everything's on the credit card. And what we do is at the end of the billing cycle, we completely pay off the credit card, and we use blue, pay this down to zero using the funds out of the home equity line of credit. Now here's what happened. Most credit cards don't typically charge you any interest for 21 to 30 days after the purchase. So let's say you and I go to a grocery store today, use our credit card, and let's say we spend 300 bucks on our groceries. You typically don't pay any interest on that $300 grocery bill until the next billing cycle. Unless, of course, we pay it off completely at the current billing cycle, which, of course, you know, we don't owe any interest. Now, another benefit to using a credit card this way is it gives us points. And man, do I love points, man. I, in fact, I just booked a vacation, and don't tell anybody, but all the uh, expenses, the car rental, uh, flight, hotel, has been covered by points. I love points. Points are amazing. But the best part is I don't pay any interest because my credit card balance is always at zero. I'm not carrying any balances from month to month. So here's what we've done. We've taken our $6,000 income, shoved it into our HELOC where the balance of the HELOC goes down, it stays low, all of our expenses are paid out of the credit card, therefore we're not touching the HELOC because the moment that we, we touch the HELOC or we take any money out of the HELOC, we're increasing the interest that we owe on the HELOC. So what we do is we put it on our credit card, and then once towards the end of the, the statement period, we completely pay it off using the funds out of the HELOC. The HELOC balance goes up, but guess what? In just short few days, we got another $6,000 income going in to lower the average daily balance, which means lower average daily interest as well. So this is one out of seven different versions. There's so many different versions out there that, of course, depending on your situation, your lifestyle, um, your finances, the strategy changes. But this has been a very good working model for a lot of my different clients, and they've been saving tremendous amount of money. And of course, um, if some of you guys, this might not be a good fit due to lifestyle or maybe uh, tolerance to risk. But I can tell you guys right now that this strategy is perfectly recession-proof. Meaning that if you do it the right way, if you, if you do it in, with proper guidance and with the proper training, this strategy can actually help you through a recession. It can actually uh, put a safety net with a recession. And yes, I get questions like, you know, Sam, what if the bank closes down or shuts down my HELOC, like the last recession that we had back in 08 to 2012. If you use it properly, and of course, with some education behind it, the chance of your HELOC closing down is virtually zero. In fact, one bank that we've worked with in the past None of their clients had their first lien HELOC shut down, frozen, or had any adverse financial setbacks in the 2008 to 2012 crash. Again, a HELOC is just a tool. How you use a tool is up to you. And of course, if you, for example, use a chainsaw to cut down trees, that's good. But if you use a chainsaw to hurt other people, not a good thing. So a HELOC inherently is not a bad thing. It just depends on how you use the HELOC, and of course that requires some knowledge and education. Now guys, I did promise a gift at the end of the video, and I wanna congratulate you for making it this far, because it tells me that you actually care about your finances. You're one of the few people that actually wanna enact change to your finances so that you can improve and save money and do other great things. So I wanna give you the gift right now, and that is a free calculator to show you how much money and time you could potentially save using this very strategy. So this is really cool. You get to enter your income, your expenses, your mortgage balance, your interest rate, and at the end, it's gonna spit out a number basically showing you how much time you can save, how much money you can save, and of course, these are estimates, but gives you motivation, gives you excitement. So where you get this calculator is chopmymortgage.com. 
mortgagemortgagemortgagemortgagemortgagemortgagemortgagemortgagemortgagemortgagemortgagemortgagemortgagemortgagemortgagemortgagemortgagemortgagemortgagemortgagemortgagemortgagemortgagemortgagemortgag